Hello everyone and welcome to our Ask the Expert webinar. We will be talking today about the EDR solution, uh, the cybersecurity industry's response to the increasingly sophisticated threats targeting endpoints and workstations. With me today, I'm here with Mark Johnson, who is the pre-sales engineer for uh, the Stormshield EDR solution. Hi, Mark. Hello, Manuel. And also with our other another expert, who is uh, Stéphane Prévost, uh, the marketing, the product marketing manager for uh, the EDR solution. Hi, uh, Stéphane. Hi, Manuel. Hi, everyone. So together today we will talk about uh, the endpoint detection and response, and also. Uh, about our solution, like I said, Stormshield EDR, um, which just has received, by the way, the French cybersecurity CSPN uh, certification, underlining the quality and the robustness of this product. To finish this uh, webinar, as usual, uh, we will open the Q&A session. So please feel free all the way long to this um, webinar to uh, raise all of your questions and I will be um, back at the end of this, uh, of this session and we will, uh, we will answer them and we will talk uh, more if you, uh, if you need more information. So before getting to the, uh, to the heart of this matter, uh, Stefan, I'd like you, uh, if it's possible, to give us a quick uh, definition, understanding uh, of what an endpoint EDR solution is. Yes, and, and before that, I will to explain uh, where we are regarding uh, EDR and why we need this kind of uh, this kind of solution? Yes, uh, because everything is bound to threat evolution. Mm -hmm. As you may know, uh, cyber attacks become becomes more and more sophisticated. Yes, and so this means that the organization to um, to block and to be able to react against this kind of attack, they need to deploy in-depth protection solution mm -hmm. uh, that will be a complement to the antivirus because the antivirus uh, show the limits against this kind of, of cyber attack. So the idea is to be a complement with a, so a new in-depth protection to help the organization to uh, to fight this kind of uh, cyber attack, sophisticated cyber attack, mainly linked or bound to uh, zero-day uh, vulnerability uh, um, disclosure. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um the general pr principle of these uh, these EDR solutions uh, is to uh, to detect abnormal events uh, on the endpoint. Okay. Uh, and uh, generally referred to as indicators of compromise. Mm -hmm. yeah, these events uh, are then correlated, uh, and uh, to, so that we can identify a attack pattern mm -hmm. uh, and raise a, an, an alert or security incident if, if necessary. Uh, but it, what we need to do is, is fine tune the configuration of these uh, uh, solutions uh, to, uh, to to define what we're what we're going to detect. Uh, we don't want to detect too little. We don't want to detect too much. Yeah. Uh, it, we need to find a balance in the configuration. We don't want to inundate the uh, uh, the administrator with, with too much information. Okay, so uh, we see the problem of, of the tuning up the, the solution uh, of, regarding the detection uh, issues to be reported. What about the security uh, incidents that we, uh, that we may uh, have? Well, uh, it depends uh, on the incident mm -hmm. uh, because uh, um, what uh, uh, for uh, or certain attacks can be quite uh, obvious. Yes. Uh, and the uh, EDR is going to uh, <coughs> detect it, uh, block it, and do what the uh, editors uh, say it will do. <laughs> uh, but in fact, this is quite uh, quite rare. Mm -hmm. uh, and most times you need a, a real person, a human being, yes. to analyze Behind what the, is going on, uh, mm -hmm. uh, to see if it's a real threat. To assess mm -hmm. the risk and then uh, determine uh, the uh, the response uh, to give. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Yeah, and, and it's kind of erased again against time, because uh, while the person is behind the console and is, is analyzing what is going on on the infrastructure, mm -hmm. the sophisticated attack is spreading in the in the meantime. So we have to to react quickly. Uh, it's like a, a water leak. You know, at the same time, you have to to stop the leak, 
-hmm. and you have to sell your furniture if you don't want to rebuy them everyone yeah. every uh, all, all of them uh so it's quite difficult to be uh at the same time uh to at diff in two different places yes so by an, uh, to analyze and to block the spread mm -hmm. so it's quite difficult and we have to the the, the analysis the security team has to be uh has to react uh, quickly Mm -hmm. uh, against this kind of attack because they they spread very very fast in in the infrastructure. Okay. And uh, and the the purpose instead of uh, um, so besides just detecting or blocking and in kind of sophisticated attack we cannot block so with just a detection. Mm -hmm. uh, the purpose and the aim the aim of the EDR solution it's to provide some action to help the um, the security team to take an action, mm -hmm. to take a decision. And so it's mainly, uh, we are talking about remediation. Yes. So the solution help him to take the decision by providing him with uh, a, a list of action. We call about response or remediation, depending okay. on what we have to do. Yeah. And uh, and then those remediation should normally be bind, uh, bound to the, um, to the incident. Okay, so it's it's quite clear uh, that uh, we, I mean, we can indeed see these notions of detections, like you uh, said, and also the response that we can provide. Uh, what about the fact that now, I mean, how uh, is the Storm Shield EDR solution different from the others? Uh, yeah. So first of all, we we just at Storm Shield, we don't want just to detect. Okay. We think that we have to block at first. Mm -hmm. and to provide protection at first. Okay. And then in this kind of, of uh, environment, in case of sophisticated cyber attack, mm -hmm. uh, the attack is blocked and then it lets the, uh, so it's proactive. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and then the the security team, uh, it leaves the hands and mind free uh, for the security uh, team to to conduct and to lead the analysis. He can do it, do this let's say in, with peace of mind mm -hmm. because they know they have time because uh, the the spread is blocked and then you, you just have i mean just yeah <laughs> <laughs> they have to analyzing and to determine what is going on on the on the, on the network on the networks mm -hmm. and uh, but he can do it uh he know he's protected so the the aim of uh, of our solution is to be a security at first and to protect our customer at first mm -hmm. instead of just Detecting. Just making the detection. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, this is exactly the case, of course, uh, Stefan, because uh, uh, this is what we can do because our, our solution benefits from from years of, uh, of expertise. And we've got a, a innovative technology in the field of EDR, mm -hmm. which is uh, is able to detect uh, hacking techniques uh, that are used to just exploit vulnerabilities in the application and the uh, operating system, uh, and so to, to block uh, this abnormal behavior. Uh, and uh, the agent, this uh, analysis is done at the agent. The agent is completely uh, autonomous mm -hmm. uh, with this technology. But uh, what we can do is, is take the example of a, a ransomware attack. Okay. Uh, this is something we're all familiar with. Uh, it, 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 <laughs> uh, uh, encrypts files. And uh, a lot of solutions, what they'll do is uh, create decoy files, which mm -hmm. are spread in the file system uh, in the uh, areas most likely to be targeted by an attacker. Uh, and uh, if the uh, file is modified, uh, the solution is going to uh, stop it, uh, mm -hmm. uh, block it and say a ransomware attack. But if the attacker doesn't take the bait, uh, the uh, ransomware won't be detected. But with uh, SES, on the other hand, what it's going to do is detect the attempt to encrypt the files wherever that occurs mm -hmm. uh, in the file system. And it's going to uh, uh, detect it uh, and block it, and the ransomware will be, will be blocked. So, so, but what's the, I mean, uh, how does it work uh, in, you know, daily business or in the real life? So if, if we take the example, the Mark's example on the, on the ransomware, so... Okay. When the ransomware is detected on the agent, mm -hmm. uh, it will raise an, uh, an incident to the administration console that will raise as well an, an email alert that will be sent to the, to the security team. Okay. So then let's say 
Bob in the security team just <coughs> received the, the, the email and uh, he's alerting, so he knows that he has to go to the administration control console because it's a, a, an emergency, it's a high level of, uh, of, in, of incident. Mm -hmm. And then on the console, he uh, directly watch that it's a ransomware, so it's a, an encryption attempt on the file, so he can, let's say, uh, take the decision and view it, and then uh, the solution through the console help him uh to remediate to this um to this one somewhere yes and he provide him with a, a list of files that have been encrypted because uh, as mark said once we detect the encryption i mean the process the encrypted uh, encryption process mm -hmm. that takes a little uh, a little time to do that yes uh, so during this lap this lapse we the we have some files that have been encrypted mm -hmm. but the solution provide a list of those files and then the security team is able to restore them, let's say, in just one click. Okay. Yeah. There we have it for ransomware and other sophisticated attacks on the console. Uh, we provide a, uh, an attack graph, which provides a, a visual representation of, uh, of the different stages of the attack. Uh -huh. And the administrator will have full context uh, information for all the processes involved. Uh, I can see uh, what has been detected. Uh, and then can quickly determine uh, uh, the threat uh, uh, and make an initial response. Mm -hmm. uh, as we discussed before, uh, time is not on your side. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, well, probably uh, for a ransomware attack, the best thing to do is to isolate the machine to stop the spread, yeah. give us time. Uh, to analyze further. To further analyze and, and see what's going on. And uh, you, you've you pointed out earlier uh, the fact that um, we, we can do some response, some remediation uh, action. What can you tell us about that in a few words? So, so uh, I, as Mark said, we have the file isolation. So you can mm -hmm. isolate, I mean, the, you can isolate the workstation. Mm -hmm. uh, I also spoke about the restoration of the encrypted files in case of ransomware. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have, let's say, plenty of action like uh, put the malware in quarantine. Uh, we can also um, restore the registered key that have been uh, modified by the by the malware because it's it's one of the points that have, it has been uh, it has updated. Uh, so there is a lot of uh, action that could mm -hmm. be provided to the to the end user, I mean to the security team. Uh, we can see that at um, real uh, monitoring tools because we give a lot of visibility on all the infrastructure and on the, all the system. Uh, so as we have this visibility, we are able to provide uh, the, the good remediation. So beyond emergency and the race against the time and so mm -hmm. on, uh, the solution provide appropriated list of remediation action mm -hmm. depending on the, um, the kind of incident. For instance, if it's not a ransomware, there is no need to provide a list of files which is not which has not been yeah. encrypted. Uh, and cool. if the I don't know if there is no uh, it's just a file for instance a fileless attack. Mm -hmm. We don't have to uh, put the file in quarantine or yeah. to remove the file. So the action is really bound to the um, to the incident. Yeah, to make the and appropriate to provide an appropriate list of action. Okay, and it's a real uh, uh, tools for helping security team to take the decision. Okay, but uh, even further than this, uh, what we can do is uh, from the elements that we've analyzed mm -hmm. uh, in the attack, uh, we can use this information to launch preventive actions. Uh, we can uh, uh, launch a, a search or a scan across our entire infrastructure mm -hmm. based on uh, the information that we've got from our analysis, these indicators of compromise, to see if they exist elsewhere in the environment. And if they do, then we can uh, take appropriate remedial action uh, and we can stop uh, the triggering of a, a viral payload, uh, for example, before it's even uh, activated. Okay, so uh, we can see how it works regarding remediation, regarding the even detection. Uh, I'd like to know more about how can we deploy and how can we configure this uh, this solution. Uh, so we let's say we don't reinvent the wheel. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we just uh, use uh, existing tools 
I mean, in the Windows environment. Mm -hmm. So the installation, it's a classical installation with standard with Windows tools. So this is for the, let's say, for the installation and for the administration team. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the uh, end user, I mean, the the people who are who were behind their their laptop or behind their workstation. Uh, so for the end user, let's say, uh, for them, it's completely transparent. They even if the agent is deployed on their laptop or on their workstation, uh, they won't see anything. The the agent is running in the operating system, and while something going wrong on the on the on the workstation, it just block or it just raise an alert to the administration console. So it's fully transparent, and it, and even on the um, resources con resource consumption, mm -hmm. uh, the our agent uh, consume very few. Um, uh, resources, meaning that it's uh, the, the the end user does not uh, know that there is something that run on his laptop because it's completely transparent, mm -hmm. both on the, let's say uh, visibility. I mean something that on the view mm -hmm. and on the system inside, and there is no no interaction with the end user. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. From uh, from the administration side, though, well, as we discussed at the beginning of the uh, of the presentation. Mm -hmm. Uh, configuration is is the key uh, mm. to effectiveness of the of the solution. And uh, ACS comes complete with uh, predefined rules to help the administrator exactly optimize the protection mm -hmm. uh, for the environment. And these uh, predefined rules are completely uh, configurable, uh, and uh, we have a high degree uh, of um, granularity. Okay. So that the uh, the uh, rules can be uh, adapted uh, precisely to the needs of the of the company so you, you're talking about granularity and adaptability mm -hmm. in that case how does fit with the uh, customer benefits that we can you know bring to them yeah the, the, the granularity really helps him to to fit as, as mark said mm -hmm. uh, to to fit his needs uh, because we thanks to the um, rules the set rules we're able to customize them and then to uh, create own rules depending on the specificity of his, of the customer business application, mm -hmm. uh, especially if there are some uh, critical business application yeah. uh, by the threat or by the, 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 the application <coughs> itself or through the data he, he, he threats. So, mm -hmm. threat. so we, we are able to uh, put some granular, so specific rule for that. And so it's very helpful to match the, let's say the, um, the customer um, um, needs relating to what is deployed in infrastructure in terms of business application. Yeah, okay. And uh, this kind of granularity, by putting these rules, uh, we will be able to uh, define the detection level according to the criticity of the, um, of of the, the application. Mm -hmm. And for instance, uh, this rule set helps the customer to comply with, uh, with regulation law. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, in France, we made a specific uh, set of rules uh, that help uh, French organization, critical French organization, mm -hmm. to comply with the French law uh, titled II901. <laughs> uh, so we provide them with dedicated rules that help them to, to comply with this uh, with this uh, regulation. regulation yeah, yeah. So, okay. so this is the, let's say the, the first part of the adaptability, so to help mm -hmm. the customer to uh, to have uh, a security policy uh, according to their needs and according to the compliance if they if they have to this kind of uh, to be to comply with this kind of, of law for instance for regulation mm -hmm. and we also have a, a second second use case let's say uh, regarding the adaptability as the solution is able to automatically adapt the level of security uh, on the environment okay for instance if we are uh, at the office inside the enterprise, we can assume that there is a lot of security tools that are, which is deployed inside the infrastructure uh, to provide the organization with a let's say standard level of protection. So the agent, the level of uh, of protection could be standard as well. Okay, we don't need to have much more uh, or to increase the, the security level of the agent because we are the, uh, at the office. Mm -hmm. At the opposite, if we are at home, especially for teleworking, yes. or if we are in mobility at the airport or in the hotel, we could not trust the, 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 the level of security of the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so by sure. dating that, 
the solution is able to automatically increase the level of security and then uh, it adapts the security to the environment. So it's very helpful, especially for teleworking and uh, mobility. Okay, I see. Uh, I, I'd just like to add to this uh, adaptation. Uh, yes. Stefan was saying about uh, um, uh, VPN connections, for example. So uh, there's the network uh, control of uh, SES, where uh, when we open a, a tunnel, a VPN tunnel uh, to the corporate network, uh, we can block all other uh, network connections. Mm -hmm. And also uh, for um, a device control, controlling uh, USB sticks, for example. Yes. Uh, so with SES, we can uh, authorize known good uh, USB sticks and block all the rest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see. And uh, uh, so we, we are um, seeing how uh, EDR solutions and how uh, more precisely EDR, uh, Stormfield EDR solution can fit into the customer's environment. So I see that we have uh, several questions already. If you have more about uh, the, the discussion we are we are having today, please feel free to raise all your questions to the, um, through the uh, chat area. So my next question for you guys is the fact that we are talking about remediation. We are talking about um, how we can fit uh, exactly and deploy uh, this solution into the the environment how can we fit in a wider ecosystem uh, regarding the customer infrastructure so regarding the ecosystem okay. um, we we think it's a, an important uh, thing uh, at storm shield and especially for uh, for uh, for our idea solution mm -hmm. uh, because when we uh, um, when we are facing to a, a sophisticated cyber attack uh, we know that um, there is a, a lot of um, uh, device or assets that might be impacted. Yes. Uh, so we need an overall visibility of the infrastructure mm -hmm. and the organization have this kind of solution which is deployed in their infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to uh, to be integrated in, uh, in, those, in those infrastructure. Mm -hmm. In fact, and this will provide the customer with a global view uh of uh, what is going on on the um, on his uh, on his on his uh, system and it's very important in case of sophisticated attack because in that case of complexity uh the attacker just don't does not fit only one workstation mm -hmm. uh he, he he target one workstation but it's only a first step mm -hmm. and then uh he will took that for the bombs to uh, spread inside the infrastructure and to perform what we call the lateralization step. And so many people know that. But so, yes. uh, so we know that he tried to reach the, the active directory in order to, to be able to have the maximum uh, right on, on that system so. privilege. Uh, so he can use, uh, so scan, he will scan the network to discover uh -huh. some machine. Uh, he will in, try to identify the AD, the AD and he will try to perform privilege escalation to to spread more and more inside the inside the infrastructure and so uh, and by being integrated in this in that ecosystem it will help the customer to have an healthy infrastructure hmm. so okay, it's very important for us to to be this ecosystem and to be integrated on all the security solutions through the wider the ecosystem not only just the yeah. endpoints yeah. Hmm. Yeah, of course uh, with this uh, with this visibility Stefan would say it provides a context and a global view mm -hmm. um, uh, of the of the threat, uh, which is uh, uh, exactly the basis of an XDR solution. We at Stormshield, we've exactly got the tools to address this issue. Stormshield uh, network security, endpoint security, mm -hmm. log supervisor. Uh, but uh, beyond that, we are also uh, can integrate with other. Uh, solutions to have a, a, a more complete um, uh, XDI ecosystem, if you will. <laughs> yeah. uh, we can uh, integrate with, with tools, uh, infrastructure tools, uh, AD, as Stefan already mentioned AD, mm -hmm. but uh, also uh, other security solutions, CM uh, and uh, SOAR uh, solutions. And this uh, increases the visibility, uh, of course, that we have across the entire information system. Okay, uh, I see that we can fit it into a wider ecosystem really easily, either through the XDR approach or 
with an EDR uh, solution to, mm. to be uh, in a healthy ecosystem. Uh, I think now we have a real clear view and uh, I hope so you too, guys, um, about the possibilities that Stormshell EDR can uh, solution offers to the uh, customer and what kind of benefits we can we can have, which is visibility, which is a high level of security. Uh, how do we uh, support them? So the customers, I mean, uh, in the deployment, you talk about the deployment, uh, Stefan, earlier in this uh, presentation uh, and uh, in the setup, I mean, in the configuration of the of the solution. How can we do for for them? So for the support at Stormshield, the the art of the support, mm -hmm. even if we have uh, a, a, um, a support team yes. uh, to support our uh, our customer, obviously, but the art at Stormshield is our partner channel. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe that uh, these partners uh, are the bridge between the customer and us. They. Uh, they know the customer, so they have the proximity with the customer. They know well the infrastructure, they know well the system, the kind of tools that have been deployed inside the infrastructure. I mean, the, 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 the tools the partner has, de uh, um, uh, has deployed inside the customer infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So we know you have the proximity with the customer and, at the, in, and he knows well our solution. Okay. So it's a perfect bridge between customer infrastructure and, uh, and storm seal solution. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we are there if needed uh, in case of specificity or in case of very complex infrastructure and so on. Assistance. Or, or, or in dedicated configuration if needed. We are, th we are there, obviously, to help either the customer or the, or the partner. Sure. Uh, but the, the art of the, of the support is the, the, the partner channel. Mm -hmm. And uh, to fully answer to your question, let's say, it's mainly based on two use cases, uh, and those use cases depend on the um, organization of the company, uh, and especially on if they have a security team on board, mm -hmm. so inside the organization. So if it's the case, the, this security team is uh, responsible to manage the security of the, of the company, mm -hmm. so they will be able uh, to uh, deploy the agent to configure the solution and to operate it in on a day by day basis, and obviously uh, the partners and Stormshield are there to help them to deploy and to configure. We also have some services like training and so on to help them to perform this kind of action. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and for that, you have two options of deployment. Uh, it can deploy either on premise, meaning that the server, the administration console, is deployed inside the company. Obviously, the agent is on the, on the laptop, on the, on the laptop or the workstation. So they obviously deployed inside the infrastructure, but so on an, what we call on-premise deployment is then the, the console administration is deployed internally of the, inside the company. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also have another service we call SaaS service. Yes. And then the customer just have to deploy the agent and then you can rely to our SaaS uh, service to go to it and to operate and uh, use the console administration which is deployed in our infrastructure in Europe. Okay. So this is the, let's say the first use, use case. case. So okay. for the company who already, who has a security team on board. Sure. And, and as you can imagine, the second use case it's... is for the, the company who don't have uh, this, this kind of security team. So what about them? So for them, we, we also rely on our channel partner, but mm -hmm. we are mainly called about um, uh, MSSP. Mm -hmm. So MSSP means manage uh, security service provider. Exactly. Uh, so it's, it's like a partner, uh, but instead just uh, helping the customer to deploy and configure the solution, it will be also here on a day by day basis to manage security incidents. So we mm -hmm. will do the, the configuration, it will deploy the agent, but it also, it will operate the, the solution on a day by day basis. So it's very helpful to cust for a customer who don't have security team on board. And because this kind of solution, idea solution, they require a lot of times, I mean, sometimes, a lot of times to, um, uh, to analyze the incident, to analyze, uh, and especially in case of cyber security, mm -hmm. um, sophisticated mm -hmm. attack. 
so they can help the so we have let's say both answer depending on the company so either we have a, a security company within the company in that case we can provide the on-prem services or, or SaaS services SaaS, yeah. either we don't have any uh, security team in the company because of the size of itself so yeah. in that case we can just uh, rely on the uh, MSSP, MSSP in order to manage all my security yeah. services yeah, yeah. okay True. I I see. So uh, thank you guys uh, for your uh, answers uh, to, to all my questions. I see that we have already some questions. So I just um, stole from you several minutes to, to answer them. And uh, please, if you have any more questions about the MSCP program or how can we uh, provide you for, with further assistance in this uh, yeah, with your EDR solution, please feel free to, to raise your questions or even you can contact us uh, uh, through the website or uh, through our mail and your contact, uh, your sales contact. So the first questions that we that we have today it's uh, how do you build uh, a predefined rule sets? Uh, so I, yeah, I can take the answer. Yeah. Go. So uh, in Stormshield we have a, a security team uh, uh, inside our R and D. Mm -hmm. uh, we call them Customer Security Lab. Okay. Uh, so uh, the, this team is responsible to uh to uh, identify new threats mm -hmm. so they are mainly in the dark web and so on to to catch some new malware and to be aware of what's going on in the in the cyber criminal uh, environment and uh, so based on that they are able to create the the, the predefined rule set mm -hmm. which is deployed i mean embedded inside the solution yes so when the customer uh, uh, install the solution, it could just deploy these predefined rules and uh, it will provide him with an optimal uh, protection mm -hmm. based on the knowledge and the expertise of our uh, security team okay. uh, on what is doing the, according to their analysis on the, on the, let's say on the field, in the field. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, we also can rely on, I mean, this team can also rely on uh, we also have a, what we call a, a sandboxing tools or sandboxing solution, uh, which is uh, uh, integrated in our Stormshield network security solution. Mm -hmm. And through this sandboxing so, uh, module, mm -hmm. uh, we can receive some malware, some files uh, that could be infected or not, depending. Uh, and then uh, this, the security team is able to analyze these files and then to recognize if there is a new threat and so on and then and and try to determine what is the the, the trends of the cyber community mm -hmm. um, if they are switching or to deploy some new techniques and so on and according to that they will be able to to create new rule and populate let's say the predefined uh, set of rules uh, which is inside the solution okay i think it's, it's pretty clear if it's clear enough for you uh please let us know and uh, if you have more, uh, any more questions, please feel free to, to raise them and Stefan will answer them. Uh, the next question that I have for you today, it's uh, which OS, so operating system, are supported? I mean, within the uh, EDR yeah. solution. Yes, yes, I, I could take that one. Okay, <laughs> so, please. <laughs> <clears throat> well, in, um, today, uh, SES is a, a Windows uh, solution. Okay. Uh, so it's uh works with all the uh, windows operating systems supported by microsoft mm -hmm. but later in the year we'll be launching uh, a linux agent okay uh, so we'll be supporting uh, linux as well uh and uh just to add in fact we also have a, a another product ses for legacy uh which is again windows based but uh for, which uh, supports uh, operating systems not supported by Microsoft or Windows operating systems are okay. not supported by Microsoft. So the old ones mm -hmm. from Windows, also the current ones, of we, course, and eventually yes. we will have a Linux. Uh, Linux uh, later in the year. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Uh, so the next question that I have for you is which rules have you defined to comply with the uh, I I nine hundred one. You've talked. Uh, I mean, you, you mentioned uh, that by the way, the the French rule regulation that uh, yeah. is a specific one. So maybe you can. I, I think or it's maybe not because it's much more. Yeah. So in fact, the the I I nine hundred one 
it might, it's a French standard, security yes. standard for uh, a critical network, if you like, uh, the security of data. Uh, but it, it, it's aligned with international standards, so it's perfectly adaptable for, for any other uh, country, not just France. Mm -hmm. and so what we provided is a series of templates, uh, basically for the hardening of the uh, endpoint uh, templates to control uh, uh, for device control, templates for network control, templates for application control. And they're there for the customer to adapt to their specific environment. Obviously, we can't know what USB stick you're using, so you'll need, yes. to, <laughs> you'll need to uh, adapt the, uh, the rule um, the, the, the rule set to, you, to your environment, but the template is there, you put in your uh, information and, it, and it's ready to use. Okay, that's that's real cool uh, and real clear. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Um, the next question is, do you perform analysis in the cloud? Do you use AI? Which is the buzzword of this right now? Yeah, yeah, buzzword so, around the uh, yeah. year. Uh, so as as you may notice when uh, Mark explained uh, the the how our uh, agent works mm -hmm. on the detection of uh, techniques of attack of technique at, of uh, techniques of attack. Yes, uh, he said that the agent is fully autonomous, uh, meaning that it does not need any cloud infrastructure. Uh, so it means that it's, uh, it works perfectly in a disconnect world. Uh, so we don't rely on, on cloud infrastructure to, to perform detection and to perform uh, machine learning and so on. Uh, so the agent is, uh, is autonomous and he, with all the rule set is able to determine if it's uh, an index of, comprom of, of compromise, compromise, if it's a, mm -hmm. a real threat that has, that has to be blocked. Uh, so it's autonomous. Uh, so we don't need cloud infrastructure. I mean, for the analysis itself, obviously we have the SaaS mode uh, where the console is deployed, but it's just to receive the alert and something is already happened on the, on the, on the agent. Mm -hmm. The agent has already taken the, the most appropriated uh, action. Uh, and related to AI, um, when I talked about um, sandboxing, it's bridge. It's our, it's our solution called Bridge Fighter. Yeah, uh, sandboxing inside, model. Inside, yeah, inside this solution, uh, we embed um, in a, in the cloud some AA uh, inside the solution. Mm -hmm. uh, that, in fact, Bridge Fighter is based on uh, our EDR solution. Yes. Okay, to recognize a sophisticated attack, um, it's fine tuned. Uh, for the sandboxing, mm -hmm. uh, and then we also add some uh, rules based on AA to help to increase the level of detection and the level of protection we can provide to our, our customer. Okay, so we do uh, we do use actually the AI in the yeah. in this uh, in this in solution. The, yeah, in this yeah. solution. Yeah. So uh, for now, uh, we have uh, two more questions. If you still have any any questions or doubt about the presentation, please feel free to, to ask us. Uh, in that case, uh, let's go through them. Uh, the next one is that in real life, uh, how does the deployment, uh, I mean, how does the deployment work? Um, yeah. Yeah, I can take that one. Yeah, you can take yeah. that one. <laughs> uh, for the deployment, uh, there are a number of uh, techniques you can use. Uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, SES provides a, an installer for the agent, yes. and then you can deploy that installer. It's an executable. You can use tools such as uh, Microsoft's SCCM, uh -huh. or you can use GPO uh, in an Active Directory environment. Okay. Uh, you can simply copy uh, the file onto the machine and launch it, uh, or you can use, if you uh, master your PCs, for example, you can uh, integrate the agent into the master uh -huh. uh, and deploy it that way. Okay. I, eventually, if you need more uh, technical information about that, I think uh, we can we can arrange like a meeting or something oh, yeah. to to make you know a, a real a real life uh, deployment or um, a test in that case. Um, the next question that I have is, uh, uh, what can you tell? I mean, or can you tell us more about the detection techniques? Oh, I could take that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, sorry, techniques. Uh, <laughs> we uh, we we discussed that a, a bit. In fact, yeah, already. In the so, uh, we we use this uh, uh, um, uh, technology, uh, which which we've um, 
uh, fine-tuned over the years, mm -hmm. where uh, SES, uh, the agent F SES, is, is able to detect uh, the techniques used by uh, by uh, hackers, the typical techniques to uh, exploit vulnerabilities in uh, mm -hmm. applications and uh, operating systems. And so what we're looking for based on these techniques is anomalies uh, in the behavior of a process. Yes. So it's exactly a behavior analysis. And so if there, there's an anomaly there, then uh, the SES agent will block it. Mm -hmm. But we also have uh, rules which are uh, 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 that that would be the threat protection, but then there's the rules for uh, the hardening of the endpoints that we spoke about, and that is uh, application control, device control, this kind of thing, uh, and that's a, a basic rule to say, oh, I allow uh, Microsoft Word, for example, to yeah. access XLS or PPT or, or .doc files, but any other application is blocked from it. Okay, so really, we can yeah. really fine tune well, yes. uh, what kind of information uh, an employee can uh, can access ah, through yes. the network. Okay, that's yeah, really that's really right. interesting. Mm -hmm. So uh, for now, I don't have any more questions. I just uh, propose to, to to wait a few seconds if we have still someone uh, writing down uh, the, it, uh, his question. So for now, if you need more information, we have already a website page about uh, Stormfield EDR solution. We have, uh, as you can see, our experts. We have our Salesforce for uh, doing all the, the, the field work. So please uh, don't hesitate to raise your questions through your partner, uh, through your uh, sales rep. Uh, we, will be, uh, we will be enchanted to, to talk to you again about uh, about EDR and how it works and how can you apply in your infrastructure. So for now, I don't have any more questions for you. So we can conclude here. And I really thank you for, for your time and for your responses on, on this uh, subject. Until uh, next time, I just uh, have to say you thank you and goodbye for watching. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye.